So hello everyone and uh, happy Monday. Um, wow, it's been such a powerful week, weekend really. So um, I kind of landed last Monday in my new house and I'm looking out of my new office at the sea. So I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is very good. And I've set up a new little altar here. Um, and I just put my hand in the bag of Dream Art cards and I've got the Kiwi bird, uh, which I know Kristen loves that bird. I've got the ant, which is the fear card. Um, and the deer, which is the 22. So it's interesting though, what, what cards of kind of, what animals are coming forward in, in this new environment. Um, yeah, so I had one of those days yesterday where I thought I need to look at what's going on in the astrology <laughs> because I had two kind of almost miraculous events with um, this new place materializing for gong baths. And after months and months of trying to have a WhatsApp call with my family, we actually managed to pull it off on my dad's birthday because um, they're just so bad with technology. So two really good things and then three quite challenging things um, happening. So, yeah, so I went and had a look at um, what was going on with the astrology. And, um, and it is, it's in, I'll show you the chart in a bit, that you see this red square, this incredibly tense energies going on. And um, I also felt drawn to look at Eris, who is the goddess of discord. So, um, we're going to look a little bit at her today and her myth and what's going on with her. So I'm kind of changing these calls a bit. Um, some of you may be aware I've been meeting with Kiki regularly and we've been kind of getting into this flow of light language healing. And so I'm going to be doing less kind of talking about the astrology. So I'm just going to do kind of 10, 15 minutes, and then we're going to do this light language healing to receive kind of, I guess, at a quantum level, healing around um, Eris and, and the kind of discord that she generates, which feels very alive in our field um, right now, and just see where that takes us. And then we'll have time for, for sharing as well. Um, so this part of the call is going to be recorded and go on my YouTube channel and then the, but the light language and the conversation won't be recorded. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're very welcome to come and join us in the, the conversation here. Okay, so um, let me share this presentation. Okay, so our main focus today is um, the Venus Moon fifth portal, and it relates to the throat chakra. So just a bit of an overview, because I know we have at least one new person here today. So Venus has um, her morning star phase, her evening star phase, and also the 40-day retrograde is an important part of the whole process, which is coming up in July. So right now we're in the evening star phase. So Venus is rising up through seven gates. And these gates happen each month when the moon and Venus come meet in exactly the same point, which in um, astrology we call a conjunction. And, and so this gate happens tomorrow, um, Tuesday the 23rd. And the throat gate, I feel, is really important. Um, and some of us have been doing the pearl sequence alongside this because it's like if we never kind of get 
to this heart healing, the open heart, and then the flow of the voice that kind of comes from our inner being into the outer world. It's like this is the manifestation of our gifts um, in this lifetime, really. Um, so it's really stepping into our integrity and power, I feel is the word that's coming to me about um, the voice. Um, and this whole kind of new field of energy that we talk about in the Gene Keys, the Synarchy field. Um, and what exactly is the Synarchy field? I think we're really at the very early stages of understanding that intellectually, but also feel experiencing that as a kind of magic that happens when people start working together in a very seamless way and and almost like um, the universe feeds us the different parts of the puzzle. So the shadow of the 44 is interference and when we don't actually interfere with each other and we just allow the energy to come through, we find that there's this kind of seamless way that everything starts to work together. Um, and it's, it's called, you know, some people would call it a hive mind. Um, I've started using this sort of beehive <laughs> pattern now because it feels sort of relevant. Um, it's interesting that the ant has come out for me today because bees and ants have that very, you know, collective way of, of working. Um, okay, so... Obviously, these Venus-Moon conjunctions, um, every month, they will take place at a different part of the zodiac. And this month, this one takes place at 17 degrees Cancer. So you might want to look at your birth chart if you have anything around that area or 17 degrees of other signs of the zodiac will connect in with this point. Um, now, in Gene Keys, this is 53, line 3, which is called Evolving Beyond Evolution. Um, and I'll show you in a minute, I think especially what's going on with Jupiter in Gene Key 3, and Jupiter's coming conjunct the North Node, so there's this tremendous potential to expand at the moment, expand our consciousness, our sense of prosperity, our gifts. Um, and the pathway is leading from immaturity to expansion and to superabundance. So I quite like how Richard Rudd talks about um, immaturity because I remember being like a kid and some boy saying to me that um, I was green. <laughs> and what he meant by green is that I was sexually inexperienced, which as I was only about nine, was actually like really good that I was that. But I remember this like horrible feeling of um, feeling like I, I wanted to be older, I wanted to be more experienced, you know, and um, and the kind of quite dangerous journey in a way that took me on. So it's, 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 not, a, it's not nice to be called immature, really. Um, so I quite like the way Richard Rudd talks about it, that um, immaturity is any time we lose our sense that we are part of this one field of energy, that we're in this interconnected ecosystem as humans and as individuals, um, that we're not really individuals at all, we just perceive ourselves to be individual. Um, but we also have like unique gifts and talents, so in that way we are individuals, so it's quite a paradox really. Um, and it's interesting, it's this field of expansion that this Venus Moon Gate is in, and then superabundance, which I love that word, you know, like the superabundance of life on Earth and the beauty of Gaia. That's kind of how I perceive superabundance. 
and being available to us all right now, the second. <laughs> so, okay, so this is the um, chart. Um, so if you're not familiar with astrology, try not to get overwhelmed by this, but I'm just going to point out some patterns. So you can see that there's this kind of big red square here. And the square in astrology is a 90 degrees, and it's this kind of very challenging energy. So we can see here we've got Pluto coming into Aquarius. This is bringing up all kinds of stuff around the shadow of the Aquarian age, um, the young people, technology, um, getting out of control, um, you know, computers, robots taking over, all these kind of themes that, um, that are emerging. And also the environmental crisis, you know, is, is kind of coming through um, Pluto in Aquarius. Then we've got the South Node here, and this is in Scorpio. Um, and these are, these are what we call the fixed signs of the zodiac. So we have Aquarius, Scorpio. Then we go up to Mars, is there one degrees Leo. And then we have the North Node and Jupiter, um, which I talked about before. Um, you can see they're in very close alignment now so this is what is so we're in we're having this portal in the field of expansion and jupiter is creating this push towards expansion um so it sounds great doesn't it generally you go oh expansion great when we're not so keen on contraction which is the field of saturn but I, I actually think, um, you know, and especially entering this field, like I've just been through this massive nine months of expanding my energy field. I've literally moved from this tiny flat and I've been airlifted into this amazing house. So that's like one expansion. But my consciousness has also expanded. But in order to achieve that expansion, there's a lot of letting go that has to happen and a lot of facing of fear. So even on the surface, like, you know, we all want to expand. We don't always want to let go, though, so that we can expand, if that makes sense. Um, and, and that will be different for each of us, you know, what happens in each time in our lives sometimes we are asked to go through these massive changes and sometimes the change is kind of on a smaller more we'll say manageable level um yeah yeah so you know it's different at different times but it's your change so that's the important thing is to embrace what is coming into your field that's asking maybe to be let go of, to, um, you know, what kind of fear do you really have of expanding? What, is, what would that mean to you to be an expanded being? I mean, for one thing, we have to let go of our victim consciousness that we are the small, tiny being, you know, the, the fearful being. So just on that level of the 55th gene key and the need to let go of our victim narrative is a is a massive thing okay so um so here here you can see the venus moon conjunction so this is what forms the gate every month um so it's not a random thing it is an actual astro astronomical event that creates this gate and if you look up in the sky and it's clear you'll see you know beautiful crescent moon sometimes almost with venus like inside it it's really lovely uh okay so enough of that for now um so what else is going on in this chart is that eris 
Um, I like to call her the guardian of the Sinarchy. And she's the goddess of discord. Um, at the moment, she is at 24 degrees Aries. Um, and this is Gene Key 42, leading from expectation, the shadow of expectation, to the gift of detachment and the city of celebration. And she's actually exactly conjunct Atropos today, um, who's one of the furies that brings death and endings. So I was kind of really feeling that on Sunday. It's like, whoa, you know, there's kind of lots of things seemingly coming to an end. And Minerva, who's the goddess of wisdom, is also at the same point. So she, her, her being there suggests we could actually really gain in wisdom through understanding this process of discord. So what happens in the Aerosmith is firstly to say that it's Jupiter who manipulates the whole situation. Eris gets blamed, but it's actually Jupiter who manufactures the game, if you like. And so Eris isn't invited to a party and she gets really jealous and upset about it. Um, she feels left out and we've all had that feeling before at some time. And so she takes her revenge on the people at the party by throwing in this golden apple. And the three goddesses, Athena, Venus, and Juno, start to fight over the apple. Um, and Par this, this boy, then Paris, is given the apple by Jupiter. And what happens is these goddesses totally fall out of their power and they start bickering with each other. <laughs> and they all have something to give Paris. You know, Venus is offering him Helen of Troy and Juno is offering him power and, and Athena is promising him power as well. I can't remember what the exact things are. But I know that um, Venus offers him Helen of Troy, and he picks this. Helen, he picks Venus, to, so Venus gets the golden apple, and he gets Helen of Troy, which starts the Troy War. So we shouldn't underestimate the power of Eris and her conflict and discord that she causes by throwing in this golden apple because it leads to, it actually leads to a war that thousands of people then die in. Um, so she can, she's got this very hard edge to her and she's also squaring Pluto at the moment. Um, and that's been going on for quite a while. So you can really see this Eris energy in the world of, of discord and you know, like in Britain, it definitely played out with Brexit and vaccinations, you know, things that massively divided people and caused a lot of discord, division, you know, family members stopped seeing each other. These were really very big divisions that were going on and still are going on, actually. So I would put that down to Eris. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to go into the field of a ceremony, which um, we do a ceremony every month when these happen. Um, so Cynthia is going to be leading throat chakra balance. We're going to be doing some more light. We're going to do light uh, language healing today, uh, but we're going to do some more tomorrow more around the gate. So we're going to focus on Eris and Discord today for the healing and then focus on, you know, the superabundance coming through the throat or expansion superabundance. And then we're going to do some creative writing as well. Okay, so what time are we at? Okay, so... Um, so we're going to do the sound healing bit. Um, so for this, I just invite you to close your eyes 
Um, Kiki and I are going to tune into Eris and we're going to share sound with you. And um, that could last anywhere for 10, 15 minutes and then we'll come together and, and share uh, any experiences after that. So I'm going to stop the recording as well now. 